Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Promotion. Because today I'm going to show you this. So just follow me into After Effects. So what is it actually that I want to show you today? Well, it's all about motion tracking and we will learn two different methods today. First, planar track with Mocha. But I'm also going to show you how to object track the same shot and talk a little bit about the differences, when to use what, benefits and workflows. So let's do this. Oh, and at the very end of this tutorial, you will see a sneak preview of the next tutorial, which will be an in-depth 3D object tracking tutorial. So stick around for that. First things first. I filmed this take here and once I'm jumping, I'm duplicating the clip by hitting Shift and D. And also cut the duplicate by hitting Control Shift and D. Now right click on this, go to time and freeze frame this. And we can also directly mask this frame out. Perfect. Now let's go to the point where I'm touching the frame and the tracking needs to start. Again, I cut both clips here and prep work is almost finished. Let's just pre comp this and choose move all attributes into the new composition. Because now we also get the option to adjust the composition duration to the time span of the clip. And we do the same to this layer. Because now we have two comps that perfectly align on the first frame, both with the same length and dimensions. And now we can start with the tracking. As mentioned, we start with Mocha and a planar track. You have to understand that this happens on a 2D layer. So there's no real information in the track if the frame is rotated in 3D space or if it's closer or further away from camera. No 3D data is involved in this. To show this to you, I have created this 3D scene here. Both of those images look like the same and they do the same thing, right? Almost. If we see this in perspective, you see that one image is just scaling up and the other one is indeed coming closer to the camera and does all the 3D movement. In my shot, I track the image with Mocha, but the glass on top of the frame in 3D space, so you can see all the reflections moving along. And also here a quick comparison how this would look if the reflections would only be there in two dimensions. Hmm. Okay, and I hope you see that reflections only look good if they are interacting with the environment. Now, let's apply the Mocha effect to the footage. And to open the tracking software, simply click on the logo here. We only want to track the frame. But before we do that, let's analyze the footage. Which would be the best part to track? Hmm. So here in the sky almost has the same color as the frame. Hmm. And the top part also changes a lot in the sunlight brightness wise. Hey, but my fingers also stay pretty solid on the frame. So I may want to incorporate them. Yes, it always makes sense to analyze it first. I once had a shot that I needed to track with Peter Dinklage in it. The track was almost impossible as everything except him was so much out of focus. But then I found that he did not move his face at all during the whole shot. So instead of going through the tracking nightmare, I simply tracked his face. Job done. So let's do a U shape and try this. What I also want to do is enable the surface tool and align this blue box to the frame as good as I can, because this is our single point of truth, as this represents our tracking. And I'm doing this as I would do it in a professional shot. So feel free to learn something about workflows here. As this frame also changes perspective quite a lot, let's enable this too. And for the first time we click on tracking. I'm not expecting a final result here, but more something like where do I need to focus on what is working and what not. So let's hit the track forward button and it works pretty good until, well, it doesn't hit. So what is happening here? 
the frame rotates quite a bit and somehow Mocha does not realize this. Okay, so why don't we just tell this to Mocha in advance? Let us simply type in a value here in the rotation. You could also keyframe this, but again, let's try and see what works and then focus on what doesn't. So I type in four degrees and try it all over again. And yes, this helps us over this part. And now the spline is just slipping a little bit. So let's go to that point and adjust the spline. Now, of course, we need to go back to the last keyframe to retrack with the spline adjustment and we just wait for the next issue, which at the moment seems to only be the spline. So let us just set a few keyframes whenever it is drifting off. Perfect. Okay, now let's analyze this again. The spline follows our frame pretty good now. And by the way, the spline only defines where exactly Mocha is looking at. It is no indication for the quality of the track. So. For now, let's simply disable it and only focus on the surface tool again. Okay, the overall track seems super solid, but it just drifts a little over time. And again, once we have defined the issue, Mocha offers a solution for us. And in this case, it's the Adjust Track tab. Here I can set points and obviously for this, I'm creating four points in the corners. But feel free to use anything visually that you can reference. Okay, once I have the four points, I disable it and go from the first to the last frame and adjust the four points. Okay, now let's go to the middle and adjust them again and then in between those keyframes and so on and so on. And in that way, you create the least amount of keyframes. And again, just check the surface tool every once in a while. I would say that this is as perfect as it can be. Great! Remember that we pre comped the frame and the track at the first frame. So let's do the same here. At the first frame, the surface should align with the frame. So think about this as the four corners of a corner pin effect in After Effects. So in order to align to the full frame, we need to click on this icon to set it to the full frame. And I will show this to you in a second in After Effects, so you can understand why we did this. Well, actually, as in the past, I got a lot of comments about this and many seem to forget to do this. Let's undo this and leave the surface in the frame for now. Just save it and close Mocha. And in After Effects, we can now create the tracking data in the effect. And as mentioned, we want to use it as corner pin data. And I don't see any reason why not using it with motion blur. And of course, we want to apply it to the frame. And well, yeah, hit apply. Oh, wow, now you see what happened. Our whole composition is now corner pinned into the frame, which is not really what we want. If I move the corner pins to the edges of our comp, it aligns again just perfect. And I think now you understand that those four corner pins represent the corners of the blue surface. So let's reopen Mocha. Now we set the surface to the frame by clicking on the icon that is especially made for that reason. And again, save and close. Now, in After Effects, we again create the tracking data and apply it to the frame. And voila, looks way better as the corners are now in the corners. And when we play this back, we could call this a day. But if you also want to bring this from good to awesome, then just follow me and we do a 3D object track to add reflections to our frame. So it looks like there's glass in front of the image. And for that, I use the tool that can do a 3D object track in After Effects. The Geo Tracker from Key Tools. So I will release another really cool in-depth Geo Tracker tutorial soon and will give away licenses for free. Before we even start with the tracking, attention, this is a 3D tracker. So we want to set up the 3D scene first. You don't want to do this in the end because this would mess up everything. I shot my clip with a 24 mm lens. So I'm also using this here. Once I've applied the geo tracker to the footage, it starts analyzing it. And I have a few primitives I could use for the tracking. And this is how I created a really cool 3D head track in a 
previous tutorial. But we don't have a 3D frame in the primitives. So I will quickly show you how I created this one on my own. And hey, I'm no expert in Blender at all. So if anyone of you has a better workflow, let me know. I just measured the different sides of the frame and in Blender just created four boxes and typed in the correct sizes here and just, well, aligned them. It couldn't get any easier than that. Hey, and Blender is for free. <clears throat> now just save this as an OBJ file and now we can import it into the effects here. And now this is super easy. Just click and drag on the frame and align it to the footage. Once done, open the toolbar, which is basically your tracking window and click start. And whenever you think it drifts, simply stop and adjust it. And once you have made it, simply click on the refine all button. So all your manual changes will be recalculated into the current track. And if you're happy, which I am at the moment, you can go to the export tab and create a 3D null object. And when we play this, you can directly see that this is indeed three dimensional. And remember, we do all of this to get realistic reflections on the image. So let's create a solid to receive the reflection. Create a new black solid, make it 3D and parent it to the null object. And when you hold on Alt while doing so, all the transform settings from the null object will also be applied. So now let's just scale this to the right proportions. Okay, but we have no reflections at the moment and therefore we need two things. First, a light and second, a source for the reflection. For the light, let's create an environment light and for the reflections, I have found this HDR image on the internet from an outdoor garden. Let's place it in the comp and we can hide it and reference it in the environment light. <laughs> but we can still not see anything. And this is because of the material settings of the black solid. In here, let's bring down the metal and increase the specular settings. And now we see something great. So let's just disable the background so we only see the black solid. And in our main comp, where we also had the image tracked, we can now simply add or screen this on top. And if you want to fine tweak, you can always apply a levels effect to the layer and play with the contrast and strength of the reflections. <laughs> And as promised, here's the sneak preview of my next tutorial, a 3D object tracking tutorial. Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Marvel, uh, Flow Motion. So just follow me into After Effects. What do you think? Because this is the end of this tutorial. Were there some helpful tips and tricks for you today? How would you use an object track and how a played out one? Let me know down below. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun tracking in After Effects.